Hi everybody, my name is Eric and I'm super happy to share with you this talk about probability distributions. Before we go on though, let me first introduce to you a little bit about myself. I'm what one might call a data scientist, though really because I work for the Novartis Institutes for Biomedical Research, I'm really a computational scientist who works in the biomedical sciences, then a data scientist. Niver is a fun place to work, and if you're one of the type who wants to use data science methods to uncover fundamental properties of the biological and chemical world while being in service of making medicines, um, we're one of the best places to do it. Now, prior to Niber, I was an Insight Health Data Fellow, and before that, I was in graduate school at MIT Biological Engineering studying influenza and, evolution, and its evolution in ecology. In my day-to-day -day work, I use Bayesian statistical modeling methods to help my colleagues take decisions that leverage uncertainty. These are extremely important in our line of work because the biological and chemical systems that we measure are extremely noisy and nonlinear. So quantifying uncertainty definitely helps a ton. When we use Bayesian methods, having a firm enough grasp on probability distributions can be really helpful and leveraging the Python data science stack, I think we can get a pretty good grasp of the topic. Let's get right into it. To present this topic, I'm going to use an interactive Streamlit app that I developed and deployed on my personal Doku server. If you want access to it while listening to the talk, please go ahead and head over to pythonprob.ericmjl.com where you can follow along. When we first think about probability distributions, we might think about something like the normal or Gaussian distribution. And as such, I'm going to use this distribution as an anchoring example throughout this talk. Rather than approach the normal distribution in purely mathematical terms, I'm going to introduce it to you in terms of it being a Python object. Let's get a class definition going first. We know that the normal distribution is defined by two parameters, the mu and the sigma. Mu canonically represents the central tendency of the Gaussian, or in other words, where the bulk of the probability distribution is centered, and sigma controls the spread of the Gaussian, or how wide or narrow it is. We know that for Gaussians, mu can take any value from negative infinity to positive infinity, while sigma must be a real number Every probability distribution also comes with its associated probability density function. We'll visualize that in a moment, so stick with me. So for continuous valued distributions, we have the probability density function, and for discrete valued distributions, we have the probability mass function. What this function does is assign credibility points to the number line, and so every PDF or PMF has a characteristic shape, in our case, because we're dealing with a Gaussian, its shape would be the bell curve. One thing that's super important, you must keep this in mind, is that by definition, the area under the PDF or the sum of the PMF masses must equal to one. Without that definition, we don't have the definition of a probability distribution. As you can see in Python code, we take advantage of the SciPy stats library and make sure that the distributions PDF and log PDF are implemented for our probability distribution. The final thing we're able to do is draw numbers from it. Yes, probability distributions are number generators. More generally, we call them generative models. That seems to be the vogue term in the machine learning world nowadays. Um, and the reason we call them generative models is because they are models of how numbers ought to be generated. So we can go ahead and draw as many numbers as we want from the probability distribution. And what we'll need with the Python class is to have a draw method. And underneath the hood, all we're doing is wrapping the .rvs method uh, that's available in the SciPy stats libraries distributions. OK, so let's take a look at all of this visually. Uh, I'm going to set up my very own bespoke Gaussian, right? Uh, and I'm going to do a Gaussian that has a mu that equals to 1.7. So let's drag that over. 
And I'm going to make sure that it's sigma equals to 2.4. And let's drag that over as well. And you'll notice the plot on the right hand side updates live so that you can see what's going on. And voila, we have our very own bespoke Gaussian. Visually, the curve that you see over here is the probability density function with arbitrary values taken on the y-axis, the total area under the curve summing eq to 1, and it ranges across the support of valid values on the x-axis. All right? Okay. Now, keep in mind for the Gaussian, the, valid, the set of valid values are actually from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. All right? So just make sure you keep that in mind. All right, we're now going to first explore the, tw the twin ideas of probability and likelihood. As I mentioned earlier, the normal distribution has a probability density function. And for a distribution, the area under the curve of the probability distribution function uh, gives us a measure of probability. All right, so probability is defined on the area under the curve. If we say that the area under the total area under the curve sums to one, that is from negative infinity to positive infinity, the total sum is equal to one, then what we get is something pretty interesting. We can talk about the probability of a range of values under the curve, right? So if we if we wanted to slice out a bunch of area under the uh, under the curve, then we can talk about its probability. Uh, the fraction of total area under the curve that it occupies, which gives us a probability measure. So we'll see this inside this next demo over here. If I say I'm interested in a range of values from, say, negative 1.57 to positive 1.91, we'll see that the total area under the curve bounded between those two values is 0.45. And I, if I increase the value to something like over there, then the total area bounded between these two values is 0.84. And therefore, the total probability of that range of values is 0.84. All right. Now, if you're looking at all of this and starting to think like, oh, area under curves, there must be some link to integration and all of that calculus stuff, you're absolutely right. I'm going to skip past all of that today because today the focus is on Python code. All right, visually, that's what probability is all about. It's like a fraction, all right, a fraction of the total space of things that are possible, all right? So here's an interesting thought. What's the probability of a single value? Well, one way to think about the probability of a single value is to make sure that the range of values that we are interested in starts at that value and ends at that value. So let's visualize that right now. And if we run it, you'll notice the total area under the curve of a single point is zero. So there is no probability associated with a single value in a continuous distribution, all right? So now at this point, I have a hypothesis you might be thinking about likelihood, not probability. So can we talk about the probability of a value on a continuous distribution? Not really. However, we can talk about another property of the distribution, which is the likelihood. And the likelihood is not the area under the curve, but the height of the curve at a given point. It's like credibility points associated to numbers on the x-axis. So given the bespoke Gaussian that we have over here, what's the point on the x-axis where we have maximum likelihood? Well, let's take a look at that. If I dragged over the slider to the right, 5.64, for example, I get a likelihood or a bunch of credibility points that are associated with that value. If I wanted maximum likelihood, the natural thing to do would be to drag over the slider until you get somewhere to the middle, somewhere around there. Basically pretty darn close to where the 
basically exactly at where we would have where the mu of the Gaussian is, is defined. And of course, due to, the, due to the limitations of my programming, I've got a slider that doesn't exactly hit 1.7, but you get the point. Okay, so right at the center of the distribution, right at the definition of where that distribute that Gaussian's mu is. And as long as you keep in mind the general principle that probability is defined on the area under the curve and likelihood is defined as the height of the curve, you'll be able to keep these two ideas visually separated from one another. Okay, so the next thing we're going to explore is drawing numbers from the distribution. When we draw numbers from this Gaussian, it'll be drawn in proportion to the height of the curve. So for example, if I drew 1000 numbers over here, you'll notice that the regions uh, where the probability density function have the highest height also have the highest density of points drawn. And where the probability density function has lowest height is also where, conversely, the, prop the, the density of points is lower, all right? So we can do things like draw numbers from the, the probability distribution. And as I mentioned earlier, the probability distribution is a random number generator that has rules about how you're supposed to generate numbers. That's, that's how you can think about probability distributions. All right, so now you've seen how we can interact with a probability distribution from what I call a forward perspective. That is to say, we know what the probability distribution parameters are, and we're interacting with the data that are generated out of the distribution. Now, I want to give you a backwards-oriented perspective. That is to say, we're given data, but we don't know what the parameters of the distribution are, and this situation brings us naturally to the act of estimating or inferring a distribution's parameters. So to illustrate this point, let's play a game. I'm going to give you five values shown on the screen. That's these guys over here, or six values, my apologies, I can't count. So given these values, can you infer what are the most likely parameters of the Gaussian that generated these data points? There's a huge hint in there. I was using the term likely. So to do this, what we're really trying to do here is to find the best mu and the best sigma that ex best explain the data. And one way to do that is to maximize the total joint likelihood of all of the data. This involves calculating the likelihood of this point, and then this point, and then that next point, and then that point, that point, and that point. And if you have more data points, all of the points, okay, uh, you calculate the total joint likelihood of all of the data points. And the way we do that total or joint calculation is not by summation of the, the likelihoods. We actually take this one multiplied by that value, by that value, by that value, and so on and so forth. Now, of course, because we're dealing with floating point numbers that are potentially small numbers, fractions, instead of doing the sum of, instead of doing the product of likelihoods, that is this times that times that times that times that times that, times that we'll instead do the sum of log likelihoods, that is this log like log this plus log that plus log that plus log that and so on and so forth. Now, as you see me click around on the screen, you'll see how we're trying to optimize the log likelihood over here. Uh, so I'm going to shift this over naturally, I know the I know the final answer. So let's just run the app for a little bit, I'm going to keep clicking until I try to maximize the log likelihood. First, let's try it with let's try it along the mu axis first. Um, that looks pretty darn good 0.5 minus six. That's that's that looks pretty reasonable to me. Uh, and then let's see what happens if we do this. Nope, the log likelihood went got worse. So instead, we want to reduce the sigma. Keep in mind, 
the height here keeps changing, all right? So even though the points seem to be going down the curve, they actually might be, their total sum might be increasing, as you can see up here. And if we keep going, 4.3, 3.8, that looks pretty darn good. 3.3, minus 3.3, that's even better. Uh, that might be even better, okay? So we got something that maximizes, that might maximize the likelihood. Let's try it one final bit. Uh, no, that's not as good. So we have this final configuration of a Gaussian that maximizes the credibility points t in total that are associated with these data points, right? Okay, so now if we're not just interested in the single point values of mu and sigma, but we want to get some uncertainty around those, then we land naturally in the space of Bayesian statistics. But this is a topic for another talk, right? And if you're really curious, I have an essay that's linked at the bottom over here that you can check it out. You, you can check it out um, to get like a, a computational oriented introduction to Bayesian statistics. Okay, let's recap everything that we've gone through today. I wanna to make sure you leave the talk with the following points. Firstly, all probability distributions have an associated probability density function. That's this curve over here. The probability density function defines credibility in the form a uh, probability on, in the form of area under the curve. And it gives us credibility points or likelihood in the form of the height of the curve. Secondly, I showed you how we can define pro probability distributions in the form of a Python object. And if you think about them in the form of a Python object that you can interact with, then that can sort of make concrete some of the abstract ideas that you might see in the probability and data science literature, okay? And thirdly, I'm hoping that you got a flavor for what maximum likelihood estimation sort of looks like. And anytime you see some form of maximum likelihood estimation ongoing, underneath the hood, Guaranteed, you're going to find a probability distribution at work, all right? And all we're trying to do in maximum likelihood in, in any estimation task is to find the value or values, if you're a Bayesian, of uh, the parameters of the distribution that best explain the data as given by the credibility points defined by the likelihood function, all right? These are some of the things that you can do with probability distributions. And if you're curious to learn about how else you can interact with them, then head over to the SciPy stats library. If you pick any distribution, say for example, the normal distribution that we used in today's talk, you can see all of the other class methods defined there that show you how you can interact with the probability distribution in ways that we didn't cover in today's talk. Thanks for listening in. If you enjoyed this talk, please hit the like button below and share it with your friends. If you wanna receive a curated list of programmer-oriented data science materials, I send out a monthly newsletter with this kind of content, which you can find at tinyletter.com slash ericmjl. So go ahead and sign up if you'd like to receive it. Also, I'm on a mission uh, to build programming-oriented data science material for everybody, and I'd love your support at patreon.com slash ericmjl. Thank you, and I hope you've enjoyed Virtual PyCon 2020.